Welcome to Sunday Reads with Joel, and this is the second episode where I have an illustrious guest. Uh, I started with beauty, now I think I'm going with with age. I thought I was going to say brains. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it, 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 it seemed like it, it seemed like, like I was going to say from <laughs> brains or more beautiful, but you know, yeah, that's what I thought, man. Yeah, well, I can't overvibe you. Now, um, <laughs> this is the illustrious Anas Bazanya, uh, who, which is pretty weird because I used to read your columns when what were they like in the early 2000s way I back in the in the history tell me that i was in p2 no i wasn't in p2 i've literally met people like that i was in p2 and it makes me realize just how old i am and i think to myself that i mean if i'm going to be this old should i have more money we don't know how much money you have first of I all you're wearing that hat like you you look like you you know you don't give a okay this is actually what happened so i was going i know i was going to come on sunday read right I thought to myself that maybe I should get a facial, I should get a shave, no scalps to beat. First of all, don't, don't go too far with the word facial. But yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that means. Okay, let's be serious, yeah. I know, but the other thing is, I thought, I, I, I thought to myself that honestly, Joel does what in the theory? He talks about philosophers. Yeah, and there's no young philosopher. Not ah. even Carl Young. Uh, yeah, that's a dad yeah, joke. Great, yeah, great, just great, to great, emphasize man. the age thing, yeah. <laughs> so I kept my grey beard, kept it there, got a nice old man hat. Okay. I was going to wear like a waistcoat, but anyway, you're a legend, so I suppose you can uh, dress and behave in any manner that you choose. One time, I want to become like you in the future. In the future, when this uh, show takes off, but for today, uh, we're going to be discussing, I guess, part of your career as a writer. But also, I'm interested in figuring out, you know, the kinds of things that you read, why you read those things, and uh, you can share something that you've been uh, reading for a while. So, uh, young man, can you tell us a little bit about your career? Okay. Yeah, like when, when, when did you decide to become a writer? I think I was 18. Mm-hmm. Um, I was 18. Uh, up to that point, I'd like writing, just write, draw cartoons. Um, in the back of, of, of class. Yeah. We actually uh, You're a backbencher, that's that's what I'm trying to get to. Yes. Me and uh, actually a bunch of guys we, we had comic strips, we actually had this thing. This was a probably the, the first time I faced I faced expulsion. One of many times that would happen this would happen in my um, academic career when I would face expulsion. I ended up dropping out. I actually dropped out right before I graduated. I finished my course. Be that as it may. So, we had this kind You've said a lot of stuff in one, one, know, small, right? <laughs> one small, small, small second. You were in high school. What did you think you were going to do? Okay, first, um, I actually had no idea. Okay. I had no idea because... Um, that was high school well, That was high school here, right? Because you also have yes. Kenyan... Yes, because when I was in Kenya, I, was, I, I think I would, if I had stayed in Kenya, I would have found myself like you know the stream would have just flown and taken me along with it and I'd, I'd have found myself in an office somewhere mm. it's only when I came to Uganda that stuff was a bit disrupted and I could no longer trust um, circumstances the system or institutions mm. to, to to run my life for me because over, you know this is the thing I come I came from us from a place where we were had like 20s we were like 20 or 30 in that class teacher knew everyone's name yeah and he was on the teacher's name it was a place where like teachers were trusted authority figures teachers were wise yeah yeah. and they were your friends you could look up to them and say that this is a person who they could direct your life you could trust them to direct your life yeah then uh, we were kicked out of kenya there was some diplomatic stuff Um, moi was expelling ugandans we ended up back here and i find myself in this school where the teachers are just monsters Mm. It was, I had never, I mean, I used to get caned. This was the first time I found, I found myself in a situation where like 50 strokes and this guy is going to cane 50 people. Mm. We had situations, it was quite common, like you just, guy just walks in with a cane and you just see that look in his eye that he wants blood today. And it isn't really about right or wrong, that this guy is just... He's taking out some uh, yeah. aggravation. Yeah. yeah, so then I started to realize that, you know, honestly, I have to figure stuff out for myself. Okay. So bit by bit, um, you can try to think about maybe I'll draw, maybe I'll rap, because people might just come to 
Africa back then because we were back with. <laughs> um, <laughs> gonna make you sweat till you bleed. That was our rap. I don't, I don't endorse that message. But anyway, okay, I, so I thought that I'd become a cartoonist or I'd become a rapper. Then, um, age 18, I discovered um, a book which just blew my mind. It, not so much because of the content, because I used to read this stuff, I used to read it at this time. This was The Beautiful Ones Not Yet Born, this guy had, mm. it was supposed to be a novel. Mm. But if you read it, it isn't a novel. Yeah. The guy starts, he spends, I don't know, 15, I don't know how long he spends just talking about this guy walking from home yeah, to so his desk. description of him just getting to work. Yes, <laughs> his desk. exactly. Yeah. And then like halfway through, the guy abandons the story altogether and just starts talking about him walking up and talking to his buddies, having um, a beer with his other buddies. It's, I mean, the fact that you could take a tradition and just disrupt it completely and it still works, it even not just works, but it comes out looking better. Mm. The idea that you can find even greater freedom and in the, in this particular space by creating your own mm. your own rules your own your path own your own format yeah, yeah okay. that's what made me want to say that okay this is what i'm going to do so how did you how did you pull it together so how did you get from i'm just you know drawing expected comics <laughs> and uh, <laughs> i'm reading these books that are interesting to i think i'm going to pursue it like it's did you have something that you wrote that you felt oh this was really appreciated and so maybe i should pursue this as a career yes was there that one moment where it was uh, there isn't something you can pick? um after reading that book i started writing because I, I used to write things school um what's it called um comprehension that's what they used to call it what's it called composition mm-hmm. english composition, composition. Yes. yeah I used mm-hmm. to do that i would do it for other for people make a little money on the side if it was like that you should do it for people i used to do it for people's composition mm-hmm. yeah. got that fresh composition for you <laughs> you know that like, that kind of yeah. dealer anyway. so oh but i don't have any money i don't have any money well you can pay me in Bushera, you know, it's because it's like that mm. yeah it's like <laughs> school is like prison yes <laughs> you you have all kinds of things that act as currency. that's right mm-hmm. so i can't I, I, I don't have any money but i've got some bush here i've got some bush here okay make it four spoons and you've got a bill mm. okay <laughs> three i've got three so, okay. so yeah i would write that then i began one day i was just in the through i just threw in some of the techniques which i was trying to copy from the writer of beautiful ones not just born or sorry korean man just began throwing a little few, a few things here and there and I, I liked it. Then I thought to myself, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. This was during that, you know, that post adolescent idealism stage where you now are beginning to think about your Africanness against the whiteness. And you begin mm. to think about things like, oh, uh, justice and fairness, identity. You said you're wrong to have about a world every view. single thing. <laughs> yes, you begin to have yeah. a world view, and you have no idea how wrong it is. Yeah. So yeah, I began writing, and I said, yeah, "That's what I want to do. Okay. I'm going to ditch my my English name and become Basanya Sengte." All of a sudden, here I am. I finally have, com- have the confidence to actually express what's in my mind, my thoughts. Mm. To, to go on a page, I'm doing a lot of a, a lot of that. I think that's what I want to do in my life. That's what I want to do in my life. But um, in the meantime, how about I earn a bit of money, do some easy, easy writing, and at the same time, then I pursue my novel. So that's what I did. I signed up for mass communication at Makere University, ended up back in Uganda, and while well, I'm trying to write the novel, then during um, one of the assignments we had, at Makere was um, see if you can get yourself published in newspapers. Uh-huh. So at that time, the newspapers, the, what they call leisure writing, they would have stories about uh, the themes are always the same: uh, detutha, <laughs> um, d- drunkenness, and spousal battery. That was all that people write about. Ah, uh, okay. So I sat down. I had been reading some PG Wodehouse. Mm. And I thought that hey, let me see if I can. It published. I, I wrote a story about a guy who um, goes to uh, purchase a prostitute, and um, I wrote it in a very old house in mm. pastiche. Oh, I don't find that. Are, are these stories archived anyway? <laughs> no, they are not. I would love to read that story. The print, the print press is dead. You'll never see that story. <laughs> but you know, 
they published it in papers and I found my, that's how I ended up in newspapers. Okay. That became my career. The novel never took off. It was, well, as you'd guess, from the first novel of a, I don't know, I think I began writing it when I was 18. I have a question about that. So, like, when, when you began writing the novel, um, what I hear different writers say is that the first novel is like everything in your life up until that point. Mm-hmm. Then the second one is like supposed to be the hard one because now you're like, oh crap, I've got to figure out what else I can squeeze out of my perception. And so it's interesting when you talk about like that first novel, if you were to revisit it now, does it tell you anything about yourself then? Like, is there anything that you look at? Like when I look at old Facebook posts, first of all, after cringing, I'm like, oh, was I ever that person? I don't know if you look at that novel and go, is that who I really was? Or you, it makes sense to you? It, it well, it does. It is who I really was, I think, because it. But some of the ideas were really, really. I mean, I yes, I cringe. It was a, basically a story about uh, two guys, two guys of friends, and I realized that there's a lot in that about my my view and my uh, ideas about um, African masculinity, mm. especially in that particular time. Mm-hmm. Particular time. Okay, I grew up with uh, two sisters mm-hmm. and my mom. The only guys I meet at school, so I never actually, I don't think that that neighbor. And you know, I so like when I, I meet guys, it's usually the um, blockishness, the thing. Just being a bunch of lads. Yes, exactly. It's kind of noisy. Being one of the boys, you know. Yes. Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, hey. Yes. And then I have um, my two uh, best friends. We actually have like, a couple of connections with. And the, 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 there's a kind of like disconnect, there's kind of like a discordance there when you try to bring the two worlds together. Mm. And I was trying to explore that in that book and I come kind of think that one, one thing I noticed that um, what came out of it was that sexism was uh, like a release valve. Mm. And uh, it's a lot of homophobic so, so it's like stuff. and it was it, it was kind of pretty disgusting the way uh, adolescent males <laughs> bonded over such yeah. bonded by saying those kinds of yeah, things yeah because I think that you're sitting there like you have all these things you don't understand like yeah. honestly wait a second we feel like we have to be macho and strong right yeah. at the same time I know you're going through some stuff and you need to, but then how would we call, how, how, how do we bring that to, how do I be there for you at the same time not dropping off <laughs> this facade of our beards so I start using the, F, the, the other F word and just, yeah. so, this is what I realized one of the things I I think it was. I like to. I like to do it again. I like to write something again about that. Like now, from a grown-up point of view. It's okay. Um, just to stop and say, I think now that this is going to go on the interwebs, there's going to be pressure for you to now write that because the reason I asked about that is you have that perspective and you can revisit it yes. now after all these years. Yes. And I suppose what you were writing then was. For me, the things are cringe because usually they are very honest. Uh, if you <laughs> give the part, they're yes. very honest in that when I look at, the, I'm just trying to, to, to for, like for masculinity. For me, was always I needed to show that I could, like I was a man, like a man, serious guy. But we're all trying to desperately be the man. It's just I think now, at least with my closer male friendships, a lot of that facade is dropping down. Like you don't feel like. You need to show that man. Yeah, I've got everything sorted out. It's more like man, life's kicking my ass. Yeah, you grow up. You grow up and you start realizing that you know what? It really isn't about who has the loudest noise and drinks the most beers and belches the loudest. Of course, it's me, but you know. <laughs> I mean, which is really because I, mean, I think it's really not about the beer. It's about the whiskey. You don't just chug. It. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Yeah. We're men of class. Beer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> You, yes. you, you were writing this this novel, you yeah. abandoned it, then yeah. you, how did you become, well I guess, I don't know if you ever thought of yourself as, I am primarily a writer of features in the newspaper, I'm, I'm a, like a writer in the press and the dailies, is that how you saw yourself? Because again, you're also part of the blogging yes. community. So I always saw you as having different facets to the stuff that you were writing, but what I never knew was how you described yourself, how you thought of yourself primarily, or is that even not a, a concept you I were think, concerned about? I think what happened was I became famous because mm. 
it was a long time ago, so some of you guys watching this probably don't know. Like I just realized that the fiasco is the cool. Food and liquor came out 16 years ago, so the people who don't know. <laughs> 16 years ago, yeah. That was when I was famous, so some of you guys may not have heard of me, don't know that. I was the sh I, I was, he well was known. the sh I was well known he was <laughs> at some point in time. And when that happened, now I just got caught up in it, I guess, and I mm. that was where I wanted to how I wanted to identify myself. What's what what's literary fame like in Kampala? Um you get I would think that at first you want to get big headed and think that oh my gosh, look at me, I'm not walking to a room and everyone knows who I am. Mm. That's what I would, that's what I thought it would be when I was fighting for it in the first place. You you wanted it, you wanted to grasp. You yes. were like I really I want yes, to be I did. prominent. I, want to. I didn't I, initially I didn't want to become the bad idea thing. Mm. I just thought I'd just get some money and then write the write the novel. Then um, uh, here I am, some uh, other writers are doing the same thing and everyone talks about how wonderful they are <laughs> and I think I I don't know what happened, but there was something that snapped one day and I said, I also want that. I also want people to talk about how wonderful yeah. I am so much write that thing. So I wrote it and someone said, oh, it's really cool. It's a really cool article. And then um, what would happen for the next, I don't know how many years, 15 or so years, every week I'm trying to, to get to do that again because I think that, okay, so they liked that one. I have to make sure they like the next one. And that became everything. I just kept doing like I would just keep, I was so yeah. driven to, to write the to make sure that I think the next article doesn't, I don't follow up on the next article, but that's became my writer's, my writing identity. There's this period of time where there were people who were famous without, um, I'll give you an example, yesterday I was watching something on Nickelodeon, and they were talking about how Nickelodeon stars in the early 2000s, before social media, mm. they didn't experience fame <laughs> like an adult, like so if you're a Brad Pitt or something, adults bombard you when they see you out in the open, but if you're a kid star, like children are not running up to you and they, yes. they, they don't have access to you, there's no paparazzi. Right. So for them, the kid stars, they actually had the chance to, for them, they would just go to work and go, and home. go home. Go to work and go mm -hmm. home. There was no measure of like, these are the number of followers you have on Twitter, these mm -hmm. are the, you just find out at the Kids' Choice Awards, like it was a very late recognition that, oh, I'm actually known by several people. But here, I'm just wondering in the literary crowd, what was the, how would you get that feedback? How would you know that? Oh, my article is because so now I think in our mindset we know it starts trending. Yes. Or people are talking about it on Twitter. Like those are some of the measures. But uh, how would you, how would you know? Okay, this uh, this article, this you know, bad idea for this week was better than the one last week. Or I guess it's the the, the, the cool the cool thing is that it was kind of like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I find out like uh, five years in. Five years of really, really trying to chase this thing. And uh, when you realize that people have been reading this thing for five years, like you bump into mm -hmm. some, that's when you start bumping into people say, Yeah, uh, hi, I'm Ernest Watson. Yeah, I know who you are. This guy, you're right, but I like this one. You so come, and then you just all of a sudden, you want, I would think that I would be popping my collar when that happens, but instead I would be like so gratified that, oh my gosh, I'm glad you read it. <laughs> can I buy you a drink? Um, would you like, can, yeah. I, can I get you, can I, would you do you want a ride? Can I? Yeah, I didn't have a cup of but you know, I just feel so, so, so gratified at that time. I thought I'd have a I'd get a big head and a huge ego, but I didn't. Instead, it just humbled me, mm. which was just pretty much taking me back to being a shy boy there who just wants people to listen and read his words. All of a sudden, I just had this hunger to get. I guess I could just say that to get some. Revalidation because they say, okay, I got it last time, but it's not going to be there next week unless I do it again. So that's pretty much became what drove me to write. Mm. Forgot about the novel, mm. forgot about um, writing something that's meaningful or something that is actually honest or sincere, and just say, I'm going to write something that is going to get make someone amused <laughs> or make someone think that was very clever of that boy. Yeah, and that's pretty much what I was writing for. Okay. Until I, I stopped writing that idea. Okay. So when you decided, I mean, at some point, did you think, all right, I'm done with this phase of my life, or do you feel like you it just splattered away? How how would you describe the transition from now doing bad idea every week to uh, I'm I'm done with this? Oh, <laughs> this is the thing. I always felt that the lifespan of a column is two years. Really. 
That's the only story. Because I, I, I had a bunch of columns before I started a bad idea. Many of them. I think I did like seven or eight in the course of my career. Another thought would be like two years, then people to move on to the next thing. But it lasted that long. But the thing is, people stopped buying newspapers. Okay. No. It was this. It's when I began to realize that I'm getting more, more recognition, more comments from my blog than from my. Mm. And that was the time around the time when we started making. The, 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 I got a little. Um, I about to mention my guy is Chandler and. Uh, <laughs> this is now Suki. Oh, Suki, yes. Suki, yeah. Suki, yeah. Suki, yeah. I remember Suki, yeah. You met Suki, yeah. You really dissed me, but it's really... <laughs> yes. Man, she dissed me as well. <laughs> well, she, she became a female. We agreed that she was female at the end before she... So I had this little stuffed doll who did a little comic strip, me and um, my colleague, uh, Alan Busby. Mm. Um, we made a little stuffed Say doll. his name again. Alan who? Alan Busby. That guy is a bit annoying. Eh? He is... Yeah. What is the good view? He likes his own press mob. Like I think yep. he. Yeah. He looks like the kind of person who, after he sent an email, he reads it. Like he goes, <laughs> I, 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 I think he does. Yeah. Yeah. I think he does. I think he 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 takes he, he sends the emojis. Mm. I think after. when he has like a tweet that that bang, like he opens it. And goes, yeah. Like it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Turns it into his status. Yeah. This is a must be hating channel. Just know that if you're going to be here, we have to hate that guy. What's with the name Busby? I don't understand. I don't get that. Mm-mm. He's black. I don't as think he's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> King Jacketile. <laughs> that guy is Irish pretending to be African. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's think of race. The Irish is. <laughs> okay, no, 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 that's a very. No, we can't that's a very. Back. That's a very. That, that, when you say a statement like that, or speaking of race, like every part of me went, what? Where are we going? So I was getting more. More comments from about Suki than I was getting from Bad Idea. Like, ah, it's okay, it was okay. At the time, I realized that okay, it's been 20 years, and it's time to move on. I really had, at that time, um, I had been bitten by a new bug. I wanted to write uh, scripts for TV mm. movies and stuff like that. So I left the design from the new vision and set out to do my own thing. So you resigned without having secured or you just said you needed the freedom to start doing the work and yes, writing and you couldn't yes. do that while you had... Yes, that's true. Well, I had... Can I say secured? Because I did a bit of stuff, of work for, for, for Urban TV. Yeah, we're going to go. I was about to say, I mean, I want to hear about the Urban <laughs> TV period. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, I don't know if there are any of your viewers who are thinking, hey, it's them again. Because yeah. they realize that, lives, that we have been on camera together before. Joel was on my TV show. Ah, la, 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 la. Uh, I was cool, you guys. Hey. And back then. Guy gave me the, you know, that the bump. You know, like how Tom Hanks says, I can give you the bump. What's just the like, bump? just hanging out with him. Just <laughs> set you on a different trajectory. I mean, just appearing on the show. They're like, oh, he oh, must be sensible. That was the bump. Just... So I got the Bazanya bump. That's what I call it. So now I'm getting the bump back. I'm giving it back to you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I learned a lot during the period when I was outside the new vision. Because I didn't, first of all, I didn't have. Um, people kept saying that, oh, Bazani, you're a brand, you're a brand, because of that idea. Mm. And the, the assumption that um, having had my name in certain, at a certain level of fame, that this would mean that it would be very easy for me to get work, get jobs. Yeah, well, it is true that it's, I, it is privilege in a way because I get work more easily than other people, but then ultimately it's the work that the name will get you into the door, but the work is what gets you the job. But one thing that happened is I suddenly realized that, well, it isn't I realized it because I had always suspected that, kind of, kind of always known it. Probably I needed to like actually see it physically, like realize it, like feel it happening, experience it. But it was a fresh start, mm. starting from scratch pretty much. Um, here I am now, all of a sudden, I was probably 44, I think, 44, 43. And I'm back to where I was when I was 23. You're starting afresh. All of a sudden, I'm sitting here, I have the mean, I can do anything. When I was twenty, when I was, when I wanted to write a, this great novel, that the beach ones are still not yet born, sequel to mm. the beach born. They've come. That's what you'd have called it. Hey. 
<laughs> but um, at the same time here I am, I'm trying to write something that will make um, uh, I was going to say her real name. <laughs> you say the name. I will say her name. Say, say who she is. Say who you're writing oh for. Oh my gosh. Man. You know, you're writing but, for someone. No, you if, you an art, if, if you're an artist, you need to have a crush somewhere. <laughs> you need a muse. Yes, you need, mm. some, you need to have someone like, I need her to respond to this thing. Mm. If she doesn't, your next, is, your next one is going to be more fire. So I, I went from my wanting this, wanting this, then at the same time wanting to look at, oh, I think I can do all of this stuff. And now I can't focus on anything until that uh, the new vision pretty much forced me into that. In that space I had to end up doing badly and then I had this, my all neuroses and complexes which made me say that I want to focus on writing bad idea because I don't want to lose that uh, feeling of validation which I, I still had last time. Okay. That focused me. Now here I am back again in that state. I can do scripts, I can do comics, I can, I think I can actually do, I can actually write a novel now. Oh, no, I can write, a, I can be a travel guy, I can write travel stories, yeah. Or I can start, I can a million things that I want to do. And I have no idea which one, which of them I'm going yeah. to do. So I spent like two years just floating between thing and thing and thing, starting up and starting up and starting up and mm. And I think that's still where I am. I think I have a better idea of what I'm, what I'm doing now, which is making money. And I still probably go try the book. <laughs> I don't that Make much. Your money. So, this is the money I'm making. Oh, the kind that uh, this one? clings, that doesn't fold. Yeah, that's coming. Alright, no, no, no. This that's is like, money I'm like, I'm like an old lord, like an old English lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that Louis C.K. joke about like money was very weird. You'd walk into a saloon and say, I want a shave and I want uh, a lady of the night to spend time with me and I want my horse cleaned and then they just throw one coin. You're like, coin. Oh, how do you know that this is going to cover everything? <laughs> oh no, it's more like I walk I, like I walk to the and say, should I get a shave or a lady of the night? I can't have all three. Okay, this month I'll get the lady of the night and I'll just be shaved. Next month the horse will still, I guess if the, the horse the gets pragmatic yeah, it will still be clean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean the, it will still cost the same to clean two months of dirt off the horse as it would to clean one month of dirt off. Okay. I can't, I can't let you go without saying, what, what are you working on right now? What I'm working on right now, a whole bunch of things. Like I said, I, have no, I still haven't found focus. But I, I want to do, uh, I want to get um, a website which isn't a blog post it's like it's, it's such a it's going to take me take like about a month to get through the whole thing okay. just go sit on your balcony with your whiskey um alan shaw or shelly schmidt you sit on the gondi and just and just so like it. long form yes and work you know, that i'm not just going to flip through quickly like you know on medium they put their 15 minute read or yes exactly. minute read, you're just like no this is something exactly. you can keep going to and yes consume as a book but it's not it's not a published book somewhere separate where you have to Okay. I want to sit down, maybe you, you, you print it out at work so you don't have the glare of the paper. Yeah. But you look at it and. Don't you, print it out, we are trying to stay green. <laughs> oh, yeah, by the no, way, the trees. Can't. Don't kill a tree. I'm saying that as someone's cutting a tree behind us, so I, I understand the irony. <laughs> but that's something. Yeah. If someone was to read something from you, if they were to only read one thing from you, mm-hmm. what would you. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Say, check this out and maybe you'll get an idea of who I am. Never told guys the truth. I always lie because I don't trust people to um, actually appreciate what I really have to say, which is true. Mm. But uh, one thing: after all these years, is there one thing? Impulsively, <laughs> my peace on leadership. A peace on leadership. My peace on leadership. Where, where, would, where would they find me. that? On medium. So in medium, yes. they look for Anas um, Bazanya. It's medium what's Bazanya, the name of the there's piece? a piece about leadership somewhere. Because there are about three, two pieces before that. But the piece on leadership, I was supposed to be talking about um, um, my experience with uh, different kinds of bosses, and I ended up talking about everything. Like why I think this is how we are as my generation, as Uganda, as um, middle class people as leaders as followers and all that I love writing about everything and just throw it all in there. So I think that's the most honest piece I've written recently. Okay. Alright. Well thank you very much for your time sir. Uh, thank you very much for your time. 
Yeah, are you going to ca- sign my skull after? You're going to sign yeah. my skull after. <laughs> yeah. All right. Is, is this a child? You killed a you, you killed a kid. 